Hello world and welcome back. This is the second part of my Skullface animatronic robot Terminator face tutorial. So I told you that I would show you the code that I developed for this thing. It's a very easy thing. The LEDs, like I said, are controlled by a potentiometer. So a potentiometer, all it does is it divides the voltage. You can think of it as if you take two resistors and you put them in series. So you put one resistor and then you put another resistor after that. And then you have your, your electricity on one side and then you have your LED on the other. And then you have the other leg of the LED connected to ground. Basically that's going to choke the electricity enough so that it'll divide that electricity in half. It's a really cool thing that you could do with just two resistors. And so you could try that out. The potentiometer basically lets you control the amount of uh, electricity that's being resisted, uh, being choked in real time. So that's what that is. The, that, that's all the LEDs are. The actual servo that moves the joystick is basically the same code that I showed you in a previous video and I just want to reiterate that and clear up any confusion that you might still have because these concepts are very difficult to grasp at first. So I did this using the Atmega 328P chip which is found in the Arduino. I don't use Arduino because you don't need Arduino. You can just buy the $2 chips from the microchip manufacturer website and you can program program them in the C language instead of the stupid Arduino language. No offense to Arduino, but it's stupid. It it's it's like a band aid that and w whereas you need to get down into the you know into the thing and do surgery, it, it it's it's not helpful. I don't think so. Um, I do like the Micro Python of the Raspberry Pi, and I have ordered the new. Raspberry Pi Micro, they're like four bucks, and you can program those in C language, and you can program program them in MicroPython. I'm very very excited on those. I will continue to do the at Mega 328P tutorials. Um, there's a lot to work with. I've just been very very busy. Uh, you wouldn't even believe, but now everything's great, and I hope to make tutorials for both the the chip I've been doing, and for the new chips, the new boards, um, they look great. They look fantastic. So I'm very excited. And they're much faster than the Atmega 328P. The Atmega 328P is uh, 8 megahertz maximum. I usually run it at like 1 megahertz to save energy um, and battery because you don't really need to run it at 8 megahertz. It's kind of overkill for most applications. Anyway, uh, the new MicroPython uh, capable um, Raspberry microchips are much faster. So it's an exciting time. I think that would be a a board and a, and a platform that has more wide appeal. So I will be doing both. And I hope to get everything that I make on both of those uh, platforms. So, you know, you could choose what you want to do. So anyway, let's get back to the code. You'll see that I've titled this, you know, Servo X Joy Complete. I had an, a Y axis, that's why I called it this. And I've showed you how to write code in C in the previous tutorials. Here I have my include files. These are reference files that you have to include. Uh, I have a delay that I might have used, and I have input output for the AVR. This is what you have to include. You have to include this. Um, this you only have to include if you're going to be using the delay function and let's see if I actually used it. I, I've altered this code so much. I don't even see, <laughs> I might have removed it. So you could try, oh wait, oh there it is right here. Okay, I do have a delay. So you can see I've, I've put a bunch of notes because I really didn't want to go through and try to understand what this was. There was a time where I forgot everything about this. I totally forgot what all of this was and I had to go back through it so um, you'll see that I put this note here and this is vital this is absolutely critical for anybody working with servos this is what a lot of beginners have trouble with you'll see there's endless threads on the internet having trouble with servos and a lot of them is because their wiring is incorrect or they're using the wrong voltage 
Um, the other problem could be their timing is wrong, and that's a whole other topic. Uh, not all servos respond to the same timing. Um, so let's take a look. So I said make sure that the AVR, aka the chip, and the servos are connected to a common ground. That means that black wire, that negative wire, that ground wire, you have to all share the same ground. So if you have a separate battery pack for the servo, like you, you, you realize, okay, my chip needs three to five volts, so I'll put that on there. And then I have another battery pack separate that has about, you know, six volts. And I'm going to connect that to my servo. You, you do that, you connect the, the positive line and the, and the ground line to that battery pack, and then you connect the signal wire to the chip. However, you need to connect that ground line that you connected the battery pack and the servo to. You also need to connect a wire from your chip and its ground line connected its battery pack to that battery pack. The, the ground all has to be the same. The reason for this is the chip and the servo, they need that ground line as a reference. They need that all to be the same. And so they all agree and say, in, in you know the hardware world that they live in, this is the base that we're gonna be relying on to judge increases and decreases in voltage. That's the way that I interpret it. So I hope that makes sense to you. So always, always, always connect your ground lines. It's safe, it's fine. And um, if your servo is really jittery, that's probably the problem. That's probably the problem that you have. So play around with that and whatever you do, don't give too much voltage to your chips and don't give too much voltage to your servos. Don't give anything like, you know, 12 volts. It's like way too much. I've fried a few servos that way. Static inline void, timer one servo void. Okay, so don't worry about what this means. This is... Um, Oh, this is the just the type of function that we're creating. Void means it doesn't, you know, take anything. It doesn't take any. These are the parameters. You'd put like parameters in here, like something it would need to work with, something it would depend on, you know, for this code to work. It doesn't need anything, so we say void. Um, the this is just a name I gave it because I'm using timer one. I didn't want to get confused. Timer one is a 16-bit timer. I use a 16-bit timer because it's fast. It does uh, more, it's more accurate. So I called it timer one servo. You can call yours whatever you want, Yankee Doodle. And then I have this curly brace. And then these are the bits that you have to flip inside of this chip. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what I'd have to flip in the micro uh, Raspberry Pi that I'm gonna be getting because you can program that one in C as well. It's gonna have different switches to flip. Uh, you can think of it as a different house. It has different wiring and different switches and different labels. That's all it is. But basically, you're doing the same thing. You just got to learn those labels. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, so you got uh, timer counter uh, control register 1A and 1B. And these are, on the data sheet, you'll see these are just the, the switches that they decided that you have to flip to turn on the 16-bit timer. Well, it's on already, but you access it. And you set it for fast mode. And then the prescaler divides the clock by, uh, which is at eight megahertz, and we're dividing it by eight, which makes it easier to work with. Um, so we divide the, it, it's at eight megahertz, it's running at eight megahertz, we divide it by eight, so that gives us one megahertz. It's just easier to, to set our other values. Anyway, just makes math easier. And I've explained that in a previous video. So go check that out. So then we're gonna have this um, compare, uh, value right here of 20,000. This is a top value that gets reached. And so it counts, the the clock is constantly counting up and clearing, up and clearing. It counts all the way up to 20 milliseconds, which is the same as 20,000 microseconds. Um, I like the metric system, don't you? <laughs> so then we have, so it counts up to that. And then when it counts up to that, it's going to set a, um, it's gonna set a pin that I chose, PB1, uh, to output. So that's what this is. This is crucial to getting your uh, servo working. So anyway, uh, that's for the servo. This is for the actual joystick. The joystick is a, so you have your five volts going in through the joystick. 
you'll see it says five volts and then you connect that to you know your five volt power source and then you'll see a ground line you connect the ground line to there so basically the water aka the electricity is flowing through your joystick and there is drum roll please a potentiometer there's a potentiometer inside of the joystick for the x-axis and the y-axis that's all it is and when you combine those two x and y movements you can move two different servos and it looks like you're drawing circles with a laser on a wall it's pretty cool stuff right but very basic concepts so the uh, the ADC the analog to digital converter takes that voltage that's being changed uh, inside of the joystick as you move left and right or up and down and it will interpret that and change it into a digital value that your chip can understand your chip cannot understand analog values from the natural world it has to convert them into digital values that it can understand and work with so I have a 16-bit integer that I've created called read a or 16-bit yeah, integer that we're gonna call read ADC. So I just called it that because it makes my code easier for me to, to remember what it does and understand. And then we're gonna be working with a, an 8-bit value which we're gonna call channel. 8-bit uh, because it's just, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 16-bit because um, you want that, that value that it's gonna be, that it's gonna read to be as accurate as possible and the 16-bit gives you more resolution than an 8-bit. So think of like a, you know, a regular Nintendo compared to like, you know, a Super Nintendo. The graphics, right? The the capabilities. It's completely different. All right. Um, stay with me. So we have the, the ADC uh, that we turn on with this bit. So the mux, mux supplier is really, really confusing and I'm still a little bit confused by it. If you're doing what I'm doing with this chip, just copy this. <laughs> just copy this. I got it from the book by Elliot Williams called uh, uh, Learning to Write Software for Hardware. Uh, it's about programming this chip in general uh, in the C language. This is one of the most complex topics that I ran across in that book. And just copy this, you'll understand it later. Just understand that it sets up the ADC to flip through each channel, zero through six. There's six ADC channels. And so it'll flip through that and look for values. And then we have uh, the code that says to start the actual conversion, analog to digital converter, serial register A, and then we turn on the thing that says start conversion, analog digital start conversion. That's what ADSC means. And then we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to do that until there's until there's a bit that gets cleared. That's just how it works. And when the bit gets cleared on in this register for this particular uh, feature, then we return the ADC value. Okay. This is really, 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 really confusing. And uh, converting analog values to digital is an incredible thing that somebody figured out a long time ago so don't feel bad if you don't understand it at first this is the why the majority of people just go to Arduino and copy paste most of their stuff and, and Raspberry Pi too like they go and they just copy and paste it's because it's really difficult so give yourself some patience and some time with this stuff now we have so we have these we have our timer for the servo so we can communicate with servo and then we have our analog conversion into digital values for a joystick and then we have um, all of this stuff uh, in the main so we call we, we call that servo uh, timer into action we call the analog to digital converter into action and then so those are two set up you know it's like calling your two actors to the stage so you call them into the stage they're ready to go, they're ready to perform. And then here's our loop. Uh, it says while one, so while you know it's on, while it's going. We're going to make up a 16-bit resolution integer called X. Okay, so we can call it, you know, Y, we can call it, you know, P, it doesn't matter. I just called it X because it's my X axis. I just try to make things easier for my brain to remember and understand. And then we're gonna set that X value to equal 
whatever we read on that ADC on channel zero. Channel zero is connected to the pin that my joystick is, is on. And you'll see that in that previous video that I showed you how to control the servo with the, the joystick. Uh, I explained that in that. Th th this channel zero is just connected to um, a certain pin. So just keep that in mind. If you have channel one, that's the, the, the pin next to it, and channel two, that's the pin next to it. There's six channels altogether, so zero through five, because computers count with zero. Uh, and then we set our OCR1A. This is the pulse on PB1. This is connected to uh, pin PB1 on our chip, and it's, it's, it's called OCR1A. This is the value uh, right here. And we, I multiply by 3.5. That seems to work with what I'm doing. It depends on your frequency of your chip. It depends on your timer and it depends on the type of servo you got. And it can get really confusing, but you play with this value really to change the resolution. And there's better ways. Like I said in the previous video that I did about the joystick, fine, do whatever you do, whatever works. Really. That's the name of the game. I mean, it's amazing this stuff works anyway. And then I have a delay. I just have a little delay just to give it a little time. The delay stops everything on the chip. And it seems like an eternity to the chip, but to us it's just, you know, one millisecond, really. Uh, I think this is in, uh, this is in microseconds. Uh, yeah, it's super fast. So everything stops on the chip just to give everything a time you know, to catch up and then it goes back through the loop and it does it again. So it's reading that ADC, it's outputting it on that pin connected to OCR1A and it's setting that value uh, times 3.5. And that's what will move the servo left and right. So depending on how you move that, that joystick. So that's it. I mean, it's the same as what I showed you before. So if this is confusing, go back and watch that previous video. Um, I just wanted to show you how easy it was to make the skull face. The only thing that was really difficult was making the mechanics of the thing. I don't have any knowledge of mechanics. I never had any training in programming. So it was like climbing up a oil slick mountain. It was terrible. But I'm glad it's done and I just want to continue to make this uh, process easier and to share with people um, my process. That's basically it. So I hope you have a good day. Today's Friday. Have a good weekend. If you don't have a good weekend, have a good Monday and I'll see you on the next video soon. Stay grounded.